I guess we're going to talk a little bit about the comics and how much fun the comics are. And then we're going to do some topics, which I'm pretty sure that's why everyone's here. So that's cool though. Um, so comics, when I was a kid, comics were breaking all types of records. Um, Jim Lee's X-Men number one sold, uh, I think, 10 million copies. Okay. Um, the year before that, it was like Rob Liefeld's X-Force. Before that, it was Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man. So comics were like the end thing when I was a teenager. Um, properties like Mutant Turtles, you could you could spend 500, you, you can get your boss at Pizza Hut to give you $500 to print your first copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and then turn around and sell it like five years later for $30 million to, uh, I believe it was Nickelodeon that bought, no, it wasn't Nickelodeon, but anyway, they sold it to an animation studio, Paramount, there we go, and, uh, and now they've resold that time and time again. Um, unfortunately though, things have changed. You can no longer just have your comic easily distributed throughout the country, um, at least in print. Uh, there's only, there used to be multiple national distributors, now there's only one that has a monopoly. Um, that monopoly chooses which comics uh, are printed, solicited, and distributed throughout the nation. And you could not get a book like Mutant Turtles out today, which is a crime because it's books like Mutant Turtles that breathe life into the industry. So that's the bad news. The good news is, is you have this wonderful thing called the interwebs, right? Okay. Um, last year, only a quarter of a million Americans stepped foot in a comic book store. Okay. But over 16 million uh, downloads of some web comics happen every month. So the industry is going to rapidly be turning from a print industry to a web industry. Uh, the, the good news is you and I have very much the competitive edge that companies like Marvel and DC have. Um, it's a level playing field in a lot of respects and you should take advantage of that while that's still the case. Um, because what's going to happen is eventually companies like Amazon, YouTube, they're going to they're going to figure out how to make money off the little guy, and uh, and it'll start becoming expensive and exclusive and things like that. So now is a great time to jump on the web comics and get those distributed that way. Uh, monetizing is different. Okay, it used to be. Uh, you would solicit your books through a distributor, the distributor would take orders, and then you would get paid according to how many orders came in. With web comics, lots of web comics are free. So how do you monetize? Okay. Advertisements. Well, it's this really weird thing where if you go to your 16 million fans who are downloading your book every month and you say something like, hey, for this to continue, I need a dollar. And then all of a sudden you have 16 million fans giving you a dollar. Okay. Uh, so there's there's basically things like just a simple matter of putting a donate button up on your website, putting a link to things like Patreon, or doing a Kickstarter. Okay. Um, so it's a little weird in that you really need to trust your fans. Um, you, it, you're with, with uh, printed comics. The money comes first, and then the product comes after. With web comics, the product comes first, thank you, and then the money comes after, right? But the good news is, is the, the industry is booming, okay? So you might you might walk into a comic book store, and they might have like this really depressed person playing really loud music, <laughs> and they might give you this soft story about how comics is dead. It, it's just not true, all right? Maybe the printed comics are dead, but web comics are going to be alive and good. Um, if you don't know, I'm famous for Scorpius. Yeah, right? Okay. Who remembers Farscape? I see a few over 30s in here. All right, yep, and they raised their hand. <laughs> the two of us, right? Um, I started out... Uh, well, I started out digging ditches in Las Vegas. That's how my life started. My family, I'm a third generation ditch digger. 
Okay. We call them excavators. It sounds better than ditch digger, but mm -hmm. excavator is actually a really fancy term for digging holes. Okay. And uh, my father did it, loved it. My brothers did it, loved it. My grandfather did, loved it. You did I did it, it. And absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it would get up to 127 degrees sometimes in the summer, and um, there were times where I just felt like I was going to completely pass out and die. Um, but the good news was is that it paid well, right? And so I would take all my money from those construction jobs or those holding yeah. jobs. And I have a few interesting stories like backed up sector tanks and burying dead bodies for the mafia. But we won't go into that. Um, anyway, you say it was interesting, but I would I would turn around and I'd take every penny that I made doing construction and I'd run to the comic store and, and just buy stacks and stacks and stacks of bottles. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I, I think it's pretty safe to say there wasn't a book between 1989 and probably 2003 that I didn't buy. I mean, I literally bought entire comic book stores worth of, uh, of books. And uh, I'm actually thinking about cashing in on something, because that 25 cent first appearance of Deadpool is at a peak right now, right? <laughs> anyway, so our, uh, the comics were always sort of my, my love and... Uh, the thing I loved the most about them were obviously the pictures. Just have to um, I, I yeah. had always drawn since oh, very long, like very young age. And matter of fact, people ask me all the time, how, how did you get so good at drawing? And I was like, well, I just never really quit. You know, we all start, we have our coloring books, our crayons, our pencils, yeah. scribbling. Uh, you guys, were, who here knows what a PG folder is? What? Oh, a what? I'm the last oh, PG no. folder remembering guy. It used to be you'd have these standard sort of manila folders to keep your papers in at school, and and they had these printed illustrations on the cover, and we would deface these illustrations in the most horrible way. Uh, fashion, but, um, you know, so basically, I I just started drawing at a young age and never stopped, and probably around I don't know fifth or sixth grade, my artwork started to stand out from everybody else's, so it became a source of pride and. Let's face it. I wasn't. I wasn't playing any basketball or <laughs> football. You know, my eye. My the after after the fifth baseball hit me in the face at a minor league game. The doctor threatened to turn my parents into into child protected services. He's like, your child has no depth perception. He should not be playing sports. You know? And I thank that doctor for saving my life because my parents. You know, my father was captain of the football team. My mom was. You know the captain of the cheerleading team, and they just weren't going to have a nerdy son. And uh, but uh, anyway, after after that, they sort of gave up, and I was free to just keep drawing. Um, so th these are all just exa a little bit of examples of work. Comics are a very segmented uh, art form. Uh, usually, comics are done in teams. Uh, you have a penciler, an inker, a colorist, and a letterer, and if you consider writing Would you repeat art. that? Uh, uh, a penciler, someone who does the pencils for the book, an inker who uh, does all the finishing artwork, a colorist who takes the inks, digitizes them, and it colors them digitally, a letterer who also adds letters, to, uh, letters and sound effects digitally. Usually the letter also does the press prepep. Press pre prep. Okay. Can't say that five times like that. Anyway, so this is a good example of um, when you're penciling something for comics, basically how it needs to look. It almost needs to look inked. You really can't leave any room for doubt um, as to what is is where the the ink is going to go. So you have to you have to pencil extremely tightly. This is the cover idea for Spider-Man versus Blade. Um, I think it was probably like one. Of one of ten Spider-Man books that I did for Marvel in my early career. Uh, this is just an oldie but a goodie. I call this something like a rod. Uh -huh. Get it? Yeah! Uh -huh. Something like a rod. It, Marilyn Monroe is famous for a movie called Something Like a Hot. Yeah. <laughs> and Very she's famous. a zombie here, so something like a rod. Yeah, I know. But I, I'm not doing Some do. Movies, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was 
uh, a lot of my artwork you'll see, it's either done for DC Comics or Marvel Comics or IDW or, uh, gosh, Coffin Comics. I pretty much work for every major comic book publisher except for Image because uh, Image is creator own. Okay. Um, but this is what's called a commission. You'll have people come up to you and they'll want an original piece of art that isn't necessarily part of uh, anything you've done for a publisher. And surprising enough, like this person was, I was sort of shocked that this person, I mean this person did not look like uh, a Norman Reedus fan, let's just say that, okay. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I get to see this little old little old grandma with this hanging in her home, but that's, that was the client, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about inking. This is an example of uh, finished inks. Uh, now this, this is a little bit of a breakaway in that I use grayscale with some of my inkings. Now, the good thing about using grayscale is it tells colorists uh, a little bit of information when it comes to form and lighting and things like that, so they're not operating within a void. The bad part of that is a lot of, because uh, coloring comics is so procedural, sometimes they don't know how to handle uh, grayscale. And so what will happen is you can paint up like a really nice image and have all these nice values in it, and then you'll send it off <coughs> to the colorist, and it will just turn out to be a giant muddy mess. So most of the time, you ink your comics, and th this is a traditionally inked comic, no values, you take it into Photoshop, you apply a filter called Threshold, which either turns everything on the canvas to 100% white or 100% black. And then uh, this layer is used as a transparency and the colors are done underneath. Okay, so a few of the slides I showed before. Uh, this is a good example of digital coloring. Um, and this one I colored myself. This was actually colored by, I believe, uh, Alex Sinclair. Anyway, so with these, with, with a lot of these pages, this is an example of uh, the last two images were an example of a book I did with Stan Lee, which was a lot of fun. Um, I was pretty, pretty excited to be asked to do this book. Um, I thought Stan was old then, and I think this was like 10 years ago. <laughs> um, and uh, so anyway, I was really excited. It really brought me back because it, it was, <laughs> let's just, let's face it, Stan's not doing anything original at this point. I mean, this was a lot like, uh, this was a lot like, it felt a lot like doing Spider-Man. Uh, Traveler's this young scientist who gets caught in this experiment. There's no radioactive spider, but there's temporal waves. And so he comes out of this, this laboratory accident with the ability to manipulate time. And, uh, but anyway, it was a lot of fun to get to work with him on that. Um, this book actually broke uh, Boom Studio sales records for the time. I'm sure they've been broken since, but uh, it sort of put Boom Comics on the map. Um, after the the cool and the cool thing about Traveler was, is before I did Traveler, I didn't know how to ink. Okay, and you know how I talked about how comics are split into different groups for different artists. Well, if you're a penciler, you get your penciling rate. If you're an inker, you get an inking rate. Well, if you pencil and ink. You get both the penciling rate and the inking rate, okay? So you can effectively almost double your income by doing both jobs yourself. And um, and I was never inking is very hard because especially if you're not doing it yourself, because you're basically combining two people's aesthetics that may or may not jive. And sometimes you'll pencil a page, you'll send it off to your inker, your inker, inker will send it back. And it looks 100% different than what you envisioned it looking like finished. So with Traveler, I taught myself to ink. And um, I was probably inking two or three, you know, finished pencils. And, well, and he, here's the other thing. Comic book companies, they don't care about seeing some of your progress. So I would send them roughs. I would never send in the finished pencils. I just send in the finished ink page. So what I would do is I got to the point where I would just do roughs and blow them up big, and then I got so good at inking, I would just finish the illustration straight with ink, no pencils whatsoever. And, um, and But I still got my pencil rate, I still got my inking rate. Don't tell Boom, OK? 
okay? Uh, but I, I, at that point, I was doing really good because I, I was basically got to the point where I was penciling, in, well, like I said, cheating penciling, but I was, I was pumping out three pages a day, okay? And in comics, you do not get paid hourly. Uh, they are not salary or there's no salary, there's no, uh, there's no benefits or anything, so the faster you are as an artist, the more money you make. And, uh, but you got to produce good quality. Yes, yeah. yes, you have to produce good quality. So um, after Traveler, though, um, I moved on to Dragon Age, where you can see uh, I started using a lot of values in my work. Um, to this day, my Dragon Age work is still some of my, what I consider some of my best work, because they, they had a very relaxed deadline. Um, I was able to basically spend as much time on the pages as I wanted, and um, Dragon Age fans, it, it was really insane. Um, the person who wrote the who wrote the video game came in and wrote the comic, and when he would, he he like tweeted about me one time, and like the next day my Twitter had like three million views. So like Dragon Age, even though even though the comic didn't sell anything, this comic was illegally downloaded probably. I don't know, 30 million times. So it's probably my most read work, but a commercial failure. Uh, but anyway, I, I even had Russian hackers hack my uh, computer to, uh, to find artwork so they could post it before anybody else. I, I, got, I got a lovely call from uh, my editor asking why, why I leaked pages to someone in Russia. And I was like, I didn't leak pages to someone in Russia. But uh, anyway, so this was an immensely popular title, um, and it really, it really pushed me sort of, uh, before I was sort of like the fill-in guy, I was the guy they called to like bail out other artists when other artists like flaked on their deadlines or things like that. This really put me uh, into that sphere where I went from um, sort of a lower tier artist to an upper tier artist. So really sort of a transitioning phase for my career and uh, still, like I said, still really proud of the work. Now, um, a lot of you guys, how many of you guys love to do roughs for your own work? You just love it. Let me see it by the smiles <laughs> yeah. on your faces. There's a You're all life. liars because I've had you in class. No, I'm not what, What's that? What did you say? There is a life to them. Yeah, well, here's, here's the An thing. abstraction. Those who fail to plan Plan to fail, right? Okay, and one of the reasons why I put I put this in is because I rough out everything. Okay, 99% of the time, the hardest part of your job is not going to be in the finishing of the work, but the actual planning of the work. And so I literally have thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of artwork that just looks just like this, where um, very rough, very fast preliminary sketches I probably do anywhere. I don't know. I, there are some days where I could do an entire book in one day. I just sit down in the morning and rough out the entire book in one day. Um, depending on the complexity of the book. Sometimes if you have a dialogue heavy book, that can really slow you down. Sometimes, um, this was for Demon Knights, which was a, sort of a nice mixture. Uh, not too hard and uh, not, not too much dialogue. Um, but books like Dragon Age and Harley were uh, there's no way I can do that many pages a day. I really have to slow down. But uh, for this, for this stuff, I went really fast. So this is a good example of my thumbnails, and then that's the finished result. And uh, at this point, I moved on completely digital. Okay. So after Dragon Age, um, I basically stopped doing traditional pages. I think I did maybe nine issues of Harley traditionally because I wanted to have the pages to sell. But what happened is uh, I figured if I could pencil and ink two pages a day and I could do it digitally for DC, then that would be like twice as what I was making doing three pages a day for Boom. So it was all a calculated play on like how much money can I make. And even though people are like, oh, well, you don't get, you don't get an original if you do it digitally. It's like, well, you can always make prints, and and my inking rate is generally a lot more than what people will buy the original art for. A page like this would probably only sell for twenty to forty dollars post market. Okay, 
but my inking rate for DC was 160. So you do the math. But uh, anyway, sometimes your editors will let you do that too, and sometimes they won't. I was able to talk my editors into it. And if you turn in pages like this, then uh, it shouldn't be a hard conversation. Do you have a question there? Yeah, can you flip back and forth between your rough and Yeah. So the rough would be the level height. Yeah. And then that's the finished. And then there, here's the next page. And like I said, um, this was another instance where I really got discouraged with the uh, grayscale. Even though these pages look beautifully without color, um, once once they went to uh, the DC colorist, didn't know how, once again didn't know how to handle it, and uh, they just turned into muddy messes. So I, I pretty much began a phase where I got rid of uh, I got rid of a lot of my grayscale in my work. Now. This is Shadow Thief. She is an arch nemesis of Hawkman and Hawk Girl. And DC, uh, right around the time that Demon Knights, those last two pages that I showed you were for Demon Knights. Um, when Demon Knights finished, DC was doing this giant, what they call event books, and it was called Villains Month. So this was actually an issue of Justice League America. I have one issue of Justice League America to my credit, and this is it. Um, and they basically asked for like the most violent scene like I had ever drawn in comics. So I mean, I I was like, okay, you know, challenge accepted. And I mean, there there are guts, there are close your eyes, kids. Uh, there, you know, there, there's people getting their hearts ripped out. There's there's people getting cut in half. This guy's getting decapitated. This guy's like getting his brains blown out in the back. People in attendance. And um, I literally finished the last page of Su the, the last page of Supergirl was a double wide spread where Brainiac's ship was coming in and invading uh, Metropolis. And I literally drew the two pages double wide spread in the passenger seat of my Prius while my wife drove us home <laughs> from Comic Con. And we got home, scanned the pages, and sent them off with five minutes to spare before deadline. So, and I, but the reason why I did that is I knew that the Supergirl artist, uh, Hamid Asher, had been picked up by Marvel and was going to do X-Men. I was a friend with him and he told me at Comic-Con that, that he was leaving um, DC to go to Marvel to do X-Men. And so I was wanting to really impress Eddie um, because I wanted, the, I wanted the offer for Supergirl. So I got, I hit my deadlines. I think I slept for like five days straight. Uh, I don't even, ser I seriously slept for like five days straight, just out of sheer exhaustion. And I got up and I went to check my email, fully expecting or hoping that I would get picked to do Supergirl. And I instead I got an email from Mike Martz and Jimmy and Amanda asking me if I wanted to do Harley Quinn. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are like geeks from the 90s, but like Harley Quinn was like the premier she made Batman the animated series like what it is in a lot of ways, at least for me. So she I was one of the most original things from it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. She made her she made her premiere in this series. So. Although there is a Golden Age Harley Quinn, so some are arguing that Harley Quinn was actually around in the Golden Age. But I'll let I'll let the market decide the, the answer to that. But anyway, so uh, I happily accepted uh, to do. Uh, to do Harley Quinn with Jimmy and Amanda, um, and it was really funny. Uh, there's only there's only one rung of hell lower than where lawyers are going to go in the afterlife, and that's marketers. Okay. <laughs> are you planning on being marketers? Forgive me, but it's true. Um, a lot of Warner Brothers marketers. I'm gonna tell Emily you said that. They're they're just they're just evil. I don't know. Well, they're, they're they're probably the ones that you know decided to put the Hot Wheels in the Green Lantern movie. Okay, you know what I mean? Like this movie needs more Hot Wheels. Yeah. Like, we know that there's going to be twelve year olds, and twelve year olds like Hot Wheels. So let's put a Hot Wheels in a superhero movie. I mean, that's how their minds work. <coughs> so um, you know, they, they had their marketing meeting, and they're like, "Oh yeah, Harley Quinn will sell probably twenty to forty thousand issues for issue number one. Steady decline in cancellation by issue twenty." 
And we did issue zero of Harley, and um, we beat the sales of Batman. And then issue one of Harley beat the sales of Batman. Uh, we went into reprint five times, um, and it was the highest selling, it was one of the highest selling books of uh, 2016. 2017, it was the highest selling serialized book. Uh, technically, we got beat out by Snake Pluskin's uh, Escape from New York, but that is a Loot Crate book, which that don't count, okay? And if you know about the industry. Uh, but anyway, we can't say that we were the number one book because Loot Crate bought 50,000 issues of Snake Pluskin's Escape from New York. But as far as your comic book distribution goes, we were the top selling book of uh, 2016. So. I had a lot of fun with it. This is an issue where Harley's in a giant robot, and I basically did Pacific Rim Harley, and uh, um, had a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of missiles and stuff flying. Uh, I think if, if the next page is up here, you might you might get to see missiles coming out of the butt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So you know, working with Jimmy and Amanda, it was a lot like uh, just work like a bunch of. 12 year olds getting together and playing and telling dirty jokes in, in the sandbox. You know. So, uh, Harley's robot trips, lands face down, and uh, the enemy robots coming in for the kill, but Harley presses the secret weapon, and uh, all these missiles pop out of her butt, a million of them fly, and blow the bad guy up. So, we, we, had, a lot of, we had a lot of fun with, uh, with Harley. I, um, I'm the only uh, DC artist to have two issue ones of Harley Quinn and two issue twenty five of Harley Quinn. Um, I finished uh, my contracts with DC on DC Rebirth number three, uh, and that was when I uh, I was actually teaching here my first semester while finishing up uh, my Rebirth books for DC Comics. And if you read my SRIs for that first semester. They're pretty. <laughs> they're like, where is our teacher? You know, but uh, I was still, I was still finishing it, finishing up these books. Now, uh, this is a picture of Harley Deadpool. This is something Jimmy and I pitched tomorrow in DC. Everyone agreed it would be the biggest thing ever, and they said it would never get done because Marvel and DC. So we tried, we tried. Yeah. Hey, how 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 late are you going? Can I like I might bring my class. Yeah. I don't but, um, well, after you go to this review, COVID came on, so we still have a little bit of time, I'm sure. So, like, if this goes to, to 6? I don't know. 6.30, because a lot of people are going to have to run down to lectures. Okay. So, so about an hour long. Okay. Uh, an hour more. All right. All right. So, after, um, after I wrapped it, after I wrapped my, um, <laughs> after I wrapped issue 3 of Harley, I still went on to do probably, I think my last issue of Harley was issue 32. So, um, and that's when Jimmy and Amanda left the book. So after Jimmy and Amanda left, I'm just like, okay, now I'm really done. And uh, so it's been a couple months and I haven't done any Harley books, but it's still doing covers and things like that. Uh, this is the cover for what should be the next DC movie, Justice League versus Suicide Squad. Probably depending on how well Suicide Squad 2 does in the box office. Um, I did pencils and inks. Oh, um, once again, though, you can see at this point I've stopped doing I've stopped doing grayscale, and uh, the colors the colors seem to know how to handle a lot better. So uh, we got some pretty cool colors for this cover. <laughs> what was really funny about this is uh, you know they asked me for this cover, Justice League versus Suicide Squad. They didn't tell me that that. Uh, Green Lantern was a woman. So for whatever reason, I got Hal Jordan here. He doesn't even exist in the Rebirth universe. And then the new Green Lantern behind her uh, that was added later in Photoshop, as well as uh, there's another version of this cover that has Killer Frost up here. I mean, they, anyway, it was not the best. Uh, it's not the best assignment. They, there are a lot of changes, but th this was uh, also done 100% digitally. Um, so this is digital pencils digital inks, and then digital digital colors. Um, Go back to digital colors for a second. Right here? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Uh, this is some of my last work for Harley. Um, this was the Harley Quinn 25th anniversary special. Um, uh, I, I started bringing just a little bit of uh, value back into it, just in certain areas. Um, talked with Alex on how to how to handle it. So th and this is going to be a nice in between. Um, everything at this point. I mean, it, it, I don't, I don't, I don't know why I don't have more early samples of Harley Quinn pages. But at this point, the pages are looking pretty good. Um, done a ton of Teen Titan covers. You might have seen these if you went to the gallery show. The faculty gallery show, these were hanging in the, in the Woodbury. Uh, I think I did two or three more Teen Titan covers. Uh, and I'll be moving on to some other book at this point. But that's, that's pretty much it. So that's basically what I've been doing for the last 14 some odd years with uh, my uh, comic book work. And now I'm here teaching you kids. <laughs> so funny, I had, a, I had a student the other day, she's like, I'm the same age as you. I'm like, are you? I was like, I'll be 45 in May. She's like, oh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> You're only so 10 years that. older than me. Yeah. Was that me? Uh, no. Oh, I'm surprised. No. But you are in her class. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah anyway. <laughs> okay, so, enough of that. Any questions before we do COVID? No? All right. Oh, go ahead. So what sort of, I mean, you use a walking tablet or an uh, iPad Pro? I use an iPad Pro. Wow. And um, I use the iPad for about 90% of what I do. Every now and then, I still need to open up Photoshop. But 90% of what I do is done on an iPad, use yeah. Procreate. And then everything else is a Wacom uh, mobile studio with Photoshop. Um, if I could only choose one, I'd choose the Wacom. But I'll be darned if the iPad doesn't have excellent battery life. And, and if it wasn't for Procreate, I wouldn't even own an iPad. Mm -hmm. But Procreate and Apple Pencil and an iPad, it, it's the closest to drawing on paper. It's not my bad. And the latest version, I, I had an old uh, 10.5, and I mean the 9.7, the 10.5, the processor, and I, I just could tell yeah. the difference. Yeah, they, I mean, it's getting to the point. Um, my only beef with Apple, is that stupid pencil charger having to plug it into the lightning port? Oh, yeah. Like, I would just like to find whoever thought that was a good idea and just punch them right in the nuts. Well, and who winds up the power? I'm drawing. Yeah. And it dies. Yeah, and you almost have to have one Two charging. Them. Yeah. And, uh, and then, like, the, you always lose the caps. My dog has eaten at least, like, four of my Apple Pencil caps. Two of my Apple Pencils. And, um, the Wacoms are really nice that you never have to charge them, but Wacom seems to be tied to Windows which means it's just not as intuitive when it comes to actually creating the artwork, whereas I mean, Procreate has it down. So I'd like to say that Apple did it all, <coughs> but really I think it's the software developers of Procreate. Have they made anything else? No. Well, it's really weird. Procreate actually bought Painter, okay? And they, had, they owned Painter for like, 10 years or 12 years before uh, they sold it to Corel. So I think what they did is they just went in and like they basically stole all the features of the app, turned around and sold the app to Corel, and then and then launched their own rival app for iOS. And it's only, and here's the other thing, it's $7, okay? Like if you do nothing but use an iPad for a year and don't use Photoshop, you just paid for your iPad. You know? So, Sorry. question in the corner? Um. So, you don't recommend Photoshop? Or? No, I do. Matter of fact, it, like I said, I, I, almost everything you saw up here today was done on Photoshop. Okay. But you said ninety percent of it was done now. With Procreate. Now I use Procreate and an iPad Pro. So now I'm working on a, a free own project called Mary, and, um, and I'm doing almost everything on an iPad. I would bring it into Photoshop to uh, add panel borders and flatten it into a TIFF. And that's it. So that's what I'm using Photoshop for at this point. And, and if I need paths or something like that. What's your experience with, have you ever done web comics, your own published? Temerity will be a web comic. Temerity? Temerity, yep. We're hoping to launch uh, on my birthday, but uh, the universe, guys. I'll just say the universe. <laughs> um, and have you ever heard of an artist named Trent Canuga? No. 
not, not I might recognize it if I saw his arm, but no, I can't say. But I, I have met a lot of people, so maybe he's met me in some, I mean, I do anywhere from 20, I think one year I did 28 conventions a year, and there's over, there's most of those conventions, there's over 100,000 people, and a lot of them want Harley signatures, so I, maybe I have met them, and, and somehow they just sort of blended in. It gets, it gets uh, overwhelming sometimes. I, can, I don't even get on Facebook anymore because when I turn on Facebook, I immediately get, I, I'm not kidding, I got a message last night where this guy was just like, hey, I have 14 pages of my script written. Were you taking the gym late? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> but I mean, every time I turn on, yeah, every time I turn on Facebook, it's like, hey, my child's dying of cancer and they want to draw a Harley Quinn. And it's like, is your child really dying of cancer? No, I just really want the Harley Quinn. I'm going to flip it on eBay. I mean. So it's just like at this point, it's just like barricade yourself from social media and stay out of it. I'm scared of social media. Yeah, as you should be. As you should be. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Um, yeah, go ahead. For someone who is trying to afford, a, would you recommend just getting started with Photoshop? Because I had it. I've had it for a long time, but the Wacom for me has just been a complete nightmare, and I'm trying. Do you have a Do you have a companion, or do you have the mobile studio? Like no, I have like one of the very old ones where you plug it in. Okay, yeah. Well, and and that's see that that's the problem with almost all electronics now. They're building in a two-year lifespan to everything you use. I, I've I've had the same Wacom monitor for. Uh, close to 14 years now, and they no longer offer the drivers for it at all. So it just doesn't, it does not work. The pins don't work, nothing works, I can't download them. So I mean, but I'm not gonna spend $5,000 on a new Wacom monitor, I'll just, I'll just stick to my $700 iPad. So, you know, things are changing all the time. And that's another thing, um, a lot of people now are using Clip Studio. I would say, I would say 70% of comics are made on Clip Studio, and I have opened it, and that's it. I don't know how to use it. People all the time, oh man, do you use a Clip Studio, man? No. I'm like, no, 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 don't ask me. Have you used, uh, seen the, the Wacom paper? Is that what that is right yeah. there? No, I have not, but sounds cool. Yeah, so what it is, is you draw, and then it uh, digitizes it digitally. That is lots of fun. Wow. And so you could do animation where you had trace oh, wow. and paper. And That's cool. No, I haven't seen that at all. No, 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 and, and, and I'm a huge fan of uh, Wacom. And I love my studio, uh, mobile studio. But if I'm on an airplane, uh, the mobile studio is like this, oh my and the iPad is like this. Yeah. So, well, and the iPad has an eight hour battery life. I mean, if you plug it in at night, you're, you're almost good to go all day. I just carry this thing around with me. Yeah. Yeah. So I love them both. Uh, man, I, I just I wish Apple would buy Wacom. I really would. You know, it, it drives me nuts every time they like spend four billion dollars on headphones, and I'm like, why? Why? No one wants headphones. You know, have not, you, not you to be the, intelligent person. But. Have you been to SIGGRAPH? No. But the great thing about SIGGRAPH is it's got Wacom. It's got all these yeah. guys showing their latest computer graphics animation tech. And uh, they gave me some VR goggles and some gloves, and I felt clay. In my See, hands. that's amazing. Yeah, you sha I shaped well, it and feel its weight with the feedback gloves. See, look, right now I'm trying my hardest just to get wake arms so we can have like a digital painting class or a digital animation class where you're actually using ZBrush. But it's like you said, they're already somewhat obsolete. I'll get that wake arm lab just in time for you know VR VR virtual sculpting where everyone is in class doing this. You know? Well, and the cool thing is, you take this clip on a stylus, it works like a normal tablet. Yeah. So you get both. Right, you get a little three, bit of four, uh, 340. Yeah. yeah. Plus tax. Plus tax. Plus tax, yeah. I bought mine in Canada. It was 3,000 Canadian, which is like 2,500 here. So, anyway. All right, so do you want me to.
how do you want to do this, Lucy? Do you want to just get set up over here? For over here? Yeah, because I can. Do you want me to move this table over here? Or how are we doing? Where am I drawing? What we did am I drawing on this little yeah, thing? Yeah, what we did before oh, okay. was we right. did this. Okay. So well, I'm still going to grab this table so I, I, have yeah. to, I have to spread. Do whatever you need to do, and then I'll get the camera set up accordingly. You know, have, have you guys seen any of my Copic work? No. I don't work. You've never shown us your Copic work. Well, no, a lot of it's inappropriate for children. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Earmuffs. What? Earmuffs. Uh, I'm being facetious. It's Child. fine. It's, I, it's <laughs> Allison. It's fine. I, I have I have four children. Oh. I'm well, Firefox though. I don't know. <laughs> I was telling somebody about that the other day. I'm like, my kid knows the difference between artistic mood. So no, this is cheesecakey. But other, uh, oh, bro. This is, this is not this is not artistic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> But I'm like, other people's kids, I'm like, I don't want to have to explain that to kids. So I'm like, oh, keep geez. your children away from <laughs> my that. sketchbook. <laughs> Can we turn the monitor off for a second? So, oh, no, well, we'll do. Just Google yourself. Oh, all right. This is why I keep Johnny around. He's, he knows everything. He knows everything. I'm the awesomes. Okay, so let's. So this is Black Widow riding a war panda, all done in. Okay. I use Touch um, because Touch gives me everything for free. They, I'm actually sponsored by Shin and Art. They give me my paper. They give me my nylon brushes. They give me my illustration markers. They give me my alcohol markers. But it's the same thing as Copic. Matter of fact, the people who made Touch markers split away from Copic. So even though I'll be using oh. touch markers, uh, it's still pretty much the same thing. Okay, this is all done, all done in uh, Copic or touch. Wow. Are they cheaper than? Copic? They are. They're cheaper. Okay. Uh, I, I have about as Prismacolor. I don't use Prismacolor because you cannot refill them, okay. and if they would allow them to be refilled, I would not have left. The Prismacolor is going downhill. They are trying to. They're becoming. They're back. They're very quickly becoming the Crayola of art supplies. Well, they were bought by Sharpie like ten years ago. Okay. Well, you can tell <laughs> yeah. because their stuff's crap. And I don't know who bought Strathmore, but it's the same thing. I worked on Strathmore Series 500 for forever, and it's just it's newsprint. So the CEO's like, so, well, artists aren't good. Notice yeah. it's just paper. These stupid artists. <laughs> they don't know. This is uh, this is not this is something I did for head drawing. This is done in Copic. Uh, touch uh, illustration markers. Hmm. This is signed. I got this signed by Superman. In yeah, the I'm really I'm really jealous of him yeah, right now. He was pretty sexy. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, hey. Uh, I was going to do Temerity 100% in touch, and uh, it slowed me down, and my writer's like, no. <laughs> so now it's being done digitally. She vetoed that? These are all, yeah. She's she just like, well, it took me forever. Uh. <laughs> hey, that white line, like, uh, around things, like, what? do you like that white line outline? Do you do that in blue and black line? Like that? Uh, I do, I, I do very rough pencils first, and then I basically do what I did with Traveler, where I do all the drawing in ink. Mm -hmm. And then I let the ink dry just for a second, and I just plaster it with color. So he's um, talking about the white outline. Yeah.